went another and the, way. And the debate goes to the House tomorrow. And let's bring in right now two very outspoken members of the House of Representatives. Florida Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz joins us live from Miami. And Republican Congressman Michael Burgess is in uh, Dallas. Thank you both for being here with us tonight. Uh, Congressman Burgess, let's start with you. You were quoted recently saying uh, that the case on Syria is thin. You heard what happened at the hearing today. We also learned tonight that your colleagues in the Senate drafted a new uh, resolution uh, limiting authorization for action in Syria to 90 days maximum. Does any of this sway your opinion, or are you still a likely no vote? Well, I'm still a likely no vote. I, I suppose it's interesting that the authorization for force that was put forth by the administration over the weekend when we had the classified hearing was, was really pretty broad, and yet at the same time, the activity or the action proposed was described as a pinprick or a shot across the bow. Well, which is it? Or is it a shot across the bow or is it an all-out assault on, on Bashar Assad? And, you know, look, I don't think that cruise missiles launched at, at runways in his military installations are really going to change his mind much one way or the other the following day. But I can guarantee you this, Saddam Hussein will never use chemical weapons against his own people again. That's perhaps the type of you see, attitude you said, that ought you to said be taken toward Bashar al-Assad. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I, I, I misunderstood when you mentioned Saddam Hussein. Um, Congresswoman, I want to bring you in here. You mentioned on CNA that there are, quote, dozens of countries ready to stand with the U.S. on military action. Uh, right now, we only really know of, of a handful. Can you tell us, or in any sense, guide us towards which countries you're talking about in terms of, of dozens? And why is there so much secrecy surrounding potential allies? Well, my understanding from uh, the briefings that we've been given is that there, is, uh, there are dozens of countries that are ready to stand behind the United States politically, diplomatically, and militarily. We have some countries that, are, that will participate with us militarily, and, uh, and again, dozens of countries that, uh, that are ready to be supportive in, uh, in a variety of ways. But, uh, you know, I, I think what's important here is making sure, one, particularly uh, given uh, you know, Senator Rubio, my colleague from Florida's uh, comments, that we, that we put politics aside. You know, straddling uh, the, the, the precarious fence of trying to criticize President Obama while at the same time also acknowledge that we have national security interests uh, in, in the region is, uh, is not the appropriate approach to be taking. What we need to do here is ask ourselves some questions as members of Congress. We have an opportunity to debate this authorization. Are national security interests in question? Yes. No question that our ally Israel, Jordan, Turkey, they would be in jeopardy potentially if there is not a certain and severe response from the United States let me, let me get against Assad's let me, use of chemical weapons. And let me get Congressman Burgess to weigh in. Do you agree with that? Our U.S. national security interests at stake in the region? Well, if, if they are, then a limited launch of cruise missiles that you announce well in advance is not going to achieve the desired effect. And I, I'd, too, be interested in knowing the countries that are, that are going to be standing with us, because that has been problematic. It's, it's like we've got a coalition of the invisible here. Congresswoman, well, Dr. Burgess, you were you were uh, you were at the classified briefing the other day, like I was, and uh, it was pretty clear uh, and 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 laid out for us which countries were ready to stand with us militarily. I'm certainly not comfortable sharing that on national television, but you know the bottom line here is that we do have national security interests in in uh, in, in jeopardy, and in, and we have interests in in the region that must be protected. I, I certainly don't want uh, Israel to be next, or Jordan, or Turkey to be next, and have the, uh, the, the stability of the region further degraded. Uh, and then there is the, the moral imperative that we have as uh, the strongest nation on earth to respond when a, uh, a dictator like Assad violates a, a nearly 100-year uh, uh, international norm against using chemical weapons as a legitimate weapon of war. That there were, as I said uh, yesterday and I've said for the last several days, you know, as a mother, to me, I have an indelible, searing imprint on my mind Congressman. after seeing the pictures of those babies lined up. And uh, we have a moral responsibility to respond, and, and it's essential that we use our deterrent uh, ability to make sure this doesn't happen again. Congressman, do you think that well, the United look, States look, has a moral imperative 18, here? Well, I'm look, sorry? it took 18 years to hold, hold Saddam Hussein accountable for his use of gas against the Iranians and his own people. So, 
uh, you know, the moral imperative may may take longer than a weekend to play out. But here's the problem, Jake. I don't see how you've made anything any different with the, with the strike that's been proposed. Uh, what will make a difference is if you enforce regime, regime change in Syria, and apparently that's not one of the options. The boots on the ground, although there was some little bit of ambiguity in the Senate hearing, it is not one of the options. So sending cruise missiles into a, a, an airfield no, in Damascus um, may make everyone feel better, but it's at the end of the day, you're not here. accomplishing a change. Let, right? let's, be clear. let's be clear here. There was no ambiguity about whether boots on the ground would be in question. There will be no boots on the ground. Secretary Kerry made, very, made that very clear. And in fact, went so far as to say that he would be supportive, that the administration is supportive of specifically including language in the resolution that prohibits uh, the boots on the ground. So, uh, so, so let's, not, uh, let, let's not try to, to lead the people astray here or create amb ambiguity where it doesn't exist. All right, Con Congresswoman Wasserman. We are trying to lead people astray, but the problem is, Congress if you're not willing to have the follow through, how are you going to affect a change in the leadership of Syria. There, just, just, you're not going to do some it of the, the Mediterranean uh, with cruise missiles. Some of the heated debate we expect, to, we expect to hear in the House of Representatives tomorrow. Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz, Congressman Burgess, thank you so much for joining us.